Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and to, to speak with you this morning, Brother Ryan and I, about some of the work that goes on in some of these other countries and here in the United States with some of the preachers that we support. Um, so just kind of the way that uh, the work that we do um, in this process, Ryan and I just kind of maintain the communication with these individuals. Um, everything that we have here that's presented is uh, through the approval of the elders uh, as we go along. So these are the preachers that we support. Well, um, first of all, I, like, I want to thank uh, Ryan as he's gotten me going this year, kind of getting this started, uh, kind of the process, and um, we'll get into the, some of the numbers of how many preachers that we support. But last year it was 28 preachers uh, that we supported throughout the, uh, the world. Um, this year it's 38. Um, and, and Ryan, I don't, I don't honestly know how you communicated with 28 people on a monthly basis and uh, it, was, it was a good amount of work. So you did, you did a fine job by yourself, so good job. Um, one of the first things I wanna get into is do we have authority to do this? Do we have authority to, to support others outside of here? Uh, what is our examples of doing that? Paul thanks the Philippian church for his support and preaching efforts in Macedonia and Thessalonica. In Philippians 4, 15 through 18, now you Philippians also know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I get, seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from... Epaphroditus, the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Um, also, I'd like to thank in this process, so there's individuals that will help in, you know, getting funds needed to preachers throughout the world. Uh, uh, Brother Bill Wilson coordinates that, and so does Kevin Carlisle and, and Mark Gibson. It's, it's not just like you can, you know, pass along funds in, a, in an envelope and put a stamp on it and say, here, go to, go to Columbia, you know, or wherever. It has to, even, even wire transfers to certain banks it sometimes can get difficult. So there's a lot to, to know and try to getting these funds to the, because you want to get them and be good stewards and get them to the proper location. So the first thing is, let's look at some of the criteria. So some of the men that we support, um, and when I say we, I may use that term here. That's not, that's not the, uh, the eldership. That's not we as in me and Ryan. This is, this is our church. This is the funds that we have given back to the Lord. So keep that in mind. So if I say we, it's not having to do with me. Um, first of all, as we support these individuals, they need to be sound in doctrine. They need to preach the word. They need to preach the word truthfully and accurately. Um, so we, it's a continual process of reevaluating, you know, what they're preaching and how they're preaching. And there's lots of ways that we can do that. Um, the best way to sometimes do it is in person, which always provides to be a challenge sometimes if it's in a foreign country. Um, I say all this to say, you know, if, if there's anyone that's ever traveling to any of these places where these folks are, even here within the states, please let us know or tell us, you know, that you got to see the person that we're supporting and, and, and shake their hand, talk to them, maybe go have some lunch with them, whatever, and, and you know, give us some feedback on what's going on or at least tell the elders. Um, also, in, in some of this, um, we, we have to, it has to be a preacher that spends 25% or more uh, of his time outside of a church. So there are good works that go on within church buildings uh, and within church families. And, um, and, and there's evangelists all over the world that do this, but they may not spend as much time outside of, of that local church. So those wouldn't be people that would be eligible for these types of funds. And then also, you know, if, if anybody's ever been to like certain places in Alabama or Tampa, or even sometimes here locally in this area, uh, there are churches everywhere, uh, you know, relatively speaking, churches of Christ. These need to be churches or areas that are underserved, that don't have very many churches, don't have many preachers. So the places you'll see even in the United States, if you've been to some of the northeast portions of the United States, the Boston area, um, uh, New York City, um, those are very, very dry areas when it comes to, to the church. So that's, that's some of the areas we look into there. Um, so why do we have an update on this? Well, first of all, like I said, transparency. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to be good stewards of, of the funds that everyone has given here and just to kind of tell everyone where it's going. How much do you think goes towards outside preaching? This does not count 
for Brother Ben or anything that he has here. Um, just get that number in your head, and we'll look at it in a second. We do it for edification, and, and that's not just edification. I'm not talking about edification of those individuals. I'm talking about our own personal edification. Um, when I travel and I go meet with a, a church, even, even when I go to Stephenville and I meet with another church, I'm like, wow, this, they're, they're preaching the same thing. When I'm reading and, you know, it's in Spanish, but it's the same exact lesson we had this morning out of Ephesians. I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's fantastic. You know, um, it's just a, a, another level of edification, edification for us that the word is being spread all throughout the world. And I want to share some of that with you here. Also, we ask for prayers for these people because they are in some tough areas and tough places sometimes. And, and prayers that they don't give up. Um, and also perspective of, of what's out there and then in giving too. And this is a picture of Benji Notarte out of, in the uh, Philippines. Uh, this will be the area that Ryan is, is covering. I, the, the purview that I have is, is North America and South America. So I cover those areas um, with, with who I communicate with. Um, Ryan does the rest of the world, which is, is the Philippines, um, and now India, and um, South Africa. So uh, lots of good things going on in all those places. Now, in, uh, outside the preacher support, and this is in 2021, 2022, there was a total of, like I said, 28 men that were supported. Um, now there's 38. So we've added 10 during that course of the time. We added two in Zimbabwe, one in India, which is actually now about 11 in India, um, one in Colombia. And then there was a couple of men who were able to find funding to supply their needs on their own. Sometimes life changes. Sometimes people will... Uh, maybe they don't need as much this year as they did last year for whatever reason. Um, so things change. The total budget for outside preaching was over a quarter of a million dollars last year, uh, 255588 Or Actually, it's for this year, 2022-2023. Um, the results of some of that is 424 baptisms across the globe, over 2,500 Christians hear the gospel and are edified, and 70-plus churches have at least in, uh, a part-time evangelist. That's a lot. That's a whole lot of spreading of the word. So in some of the actions that we can personally take, some of these things, like I said, pray for this, uh, look for opportunities to give, and, and we are doing our best to be good stewards of that. One of the things that uh, we also do is inside our member care group, uh, we do an opportunity for people to write email, well, I'll say handwrite, emails to uh, some of these preachers will have email uh, addresses on there and you can send out a message to them. They're not here with Ben every day that you can pat them on the back and say, hey, Ben, you did a great job. Ben, you need to work on this or this, you know. We don't sell them that, but, um, or maybe you do, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's a good opportunity for encouragement for those individuals to, they may be out in an area where they're not with others to pat them on the back or give them a, hey, great job. We really appreciate that. It could be that moment that they're just like, oh, I'm not having any success. Maybe that moment when they really need a shot in the arm. So please consider that. So let's get started. So in the United States, as I mentioned, a lot of these are going to be in areas that are underserved areas, um, some of which. So we've got Patrick Brettlinger in New York, uh, Clifton Springs, New York. We have Kyle Bennett, Boston. Joe Works in Elmira, New York. Don Bunting in Union City, New York. Dale Tolles, Charlotte, North Carolina. Kevin Maxey here in uh, Columbia, Tennessee. Steve Montz, who actually preached here a little while back in Franklin, Kentucky. And then many of you may know Alberto Barrera, who preaches down the road in um, Flower Mound. However, it's entirely in Spanish, Spanish congregation, and they're growing very quickly. Um, I visited over there for a, a meeting that they had, and they were, I mean, building was was getting pretty full, so it was fantastic to see. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is, and we're not going to go through each preacher, so there's 38 men, we're not going to go through all of them, so you're like, oh man, this is going to take forever. No, it's not. Um, Don Bunting, he's out of New York metro area. They just moved into a new building, um, so they're super excited about that. Um, so it kind of changes the dynamic, so you're now advertising, hey, meet us here at this public location. It's a little bit less intimidating. Hey, come over to my house, please. Or, or you know, a lot of times they'll go to coffee shops or wherever to do some of the, the, the Bible studies, but it's an opportunity to have a, to do a total different way of marketing and, and Facebook page and the whole nine, nine yards. Um, in this lower picture here, they did a youth uh, lecture series and got to reach out to a lot of people that way. 
And then also, um, they were able to, to have a, a women's study um, that was organized by, it was a two-day ladies' class or seminar put on by the wives of Joe Works and Don Bunting, uh, both of whom we support. And in attendance, there were over 80 women from 10 states, and it was over a foretaste of rest. So they're reaching out to a lot of people in that whole Northeast region. Uh, Joe Works, again, so he's the next one. Um, he's out of Elmira, New York. And he, it, it, this first picture here, we love pictures, so we're going to have a bunch of those. He had an Indiana Bible camp that he went to. He taught four classes, total, and it was 100 men, 10 hours of spiritual activity a day. And it was a good way for some of the older preachers to reach some of the younger men, because we're, we're instructed of older women teach younger women, older men need to teach younger men. This was a perfect opportunity. And an interesting fact about Joe, um, he, he structures his, his Bible studies. I mean, he, he, is, he is loaded. So he may be doing a, class, uh, a Bible study on a Monday with somebody he met in this area. He may be doing one on Tuesday morning at 11, Tuesday at 1, Tuesday at 4, uh, Wednesday at 3, Thursday at 2. I mean, he's, he's literally doing five or six studies, maybe seven studies a week, and they're all over the map. They may be in like, uh, one's in Ephesians, one's in Philippians, one's in the Gospels, one's in, you know, it's different areas. So he's doing if you ever had to study for a, a Bible study or a class with someone, it, it, you know, you want to be prepared. He's doing a lot. So, and all of these preachers do a lot of that same. So that's just kind of a snapshot of North America. Um, let's take a look at South America real quick. Um, so in South America, we support in Colombia and, uh, and, and Chile. So in Colombia, and Ecuador, excuse me. So Colombia is, oh, Colombia we have Camilo Gaitan in Bogota, Pablo Ramirez in Cali, Colombia, and Luis Cisco in, in Palpayan, Colombia, okay? David Kinatoba is in um, Ambato, Ecuador, and then Nestor Sanchez is down in Chile. So, and, and a lot of these guys do know each other and they'll be on Zoom calls with each other, so they hold each other accountable and, and we'll see how things are going and all that sort of thing. Um, but the first preacher we'd take a look at is Luis Cisco. He's a fairly young preacher um, and he holds studies throughout the week. Um, he works with the church in, po uh, church in Popayan, Colombia. Uh, this is a pic here on the left of Luis and what looks like it's a father and son couple and they do a Saturday study. Um, their names are Wilson and Jesus and um, to the right this is actually a baptism in their inflatable baptistry. So not, you know, the, you, here's water, what hinders me, right? Um, so as a point of note, um, I wanted to mention something about, there's another preacher in the country named uh, Pablo Ramirez. He actually reaches out in a different way. He has a, um, one of the ways he reaches out with a TV program on Wednesdays locally. And he reaches a lot of people that way. And they actually um, started up conversations with the uh, camera crew of the, of the station there. So I thought that was fascinating that you just never know you're reaching out for this audience and then this audience is one that you can connect with. So it's fantastic. Um, another thing to keep in mind about Colombia, um, Colombia, I don't want to get super political, but Colombia has elected an official that is similar to that in Venezuela. And so just pray for the ability for these men to uh, continue to preach the gospel as they have been. Um, I, I don't know if there'll be any changes, but I hope not. And I hope that they'll be continuing to, to reach out in the way that they have been. Our second South American preacher taking a look at is David Kinatoba um, in Ambato, Ecuador. And this is a picture of David and his family over in the, the left here. Um, and in the middle is a, um, well, let me back up just a second. So, uh, many of you may know uh, Brother Anthony Ginton, who visits here. He's about here maybe once a month um, on Wednesday nights usually, and that's because he he's, is a preacher in Fort Worth. Um, Brother Ginton, he is uh, he's or, or he used to live in South America, and he goes down on trips where they will hit up many different churches, you know, 15, 20 different churches during their trips, and he will go with uh, Brother David. And they'll they'll travel the entire country of Ecuador. And, and travel to some of these rural areas and preach the gospel. Um, on the uh, right over here is Brother Anthony, right over here. And he's with a, a lady who just received her large print Bible. She's a, a great grandmother at one of the churches there. 
and she's very excited to get her, her large print Bible. So very excited about that. If you, if you can't see, and now you can all of a sudden see the scriptures. Um, also, and, and that's one thing that Brother Anthony does when he's there, uh, they'll take Bibles to lots of people. On the right hand, or on the left hand side, this is a, a new happy recipient of one of his Bibles right here, or his Bible. Um, he looks to be about, uh, maybe a little bit older than David, but yeah, he's super excited to have that. Um, so, and then this hut right here is just where they do one of their meetings um, in one of the more rural areas. Um, also, as a side of note, this is just fascinating, then I'll share it real quick and then move on, but Brother Anthony mentioned to me that the way that the church got started there in, in Ecuador, there weren't very many churches prior to the 70s. Um, and, and what happened was there was a lot of uh, uh, denominations that put a lot of money in to go down there and to build church buildings and then put preachers into these buildings and start preaching um, denom denominational gospel. And so what happened was um, the people of these congregations that were built up were so much seeking the truth that they, they saw error in the teachings and they also sometimes saw error in the teachers in the way they were living. And basically, at the same time, the whole country almost just kind of cast everyone out and they had these these families of churches that were looking for people to, uh, to teach. And so that's when Brother Ginton and his dad went in back in the 70s and 80s and you had ready-made churches all ready to go. So it's pretty amazing how, how um, hunger, people hunger and thirst after righteousness and seek the truth and it builds on its own. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to communicate with these individuals. Um, it's very edifying to me and uplifting for me. Um, and I hope that it is for you too. And look for opportunities and ways that you can give and also encourage them as well. And so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan and he's going to start covering the Philippine area. So here we go. Good morning. Uh, two quick uh admin notes uh, first you might notice I'm the one wearing the headset it's not because this is more interesting or or more uh, important it's because I was voted most likely to, to walk off stage um, and, and turn around uh, so that that's why I have that and then also uh, Ben told me hey just take a deep breath you talk quick slow down you have all the time in the world I said, no thank you oh, got it got it got it went over to talk to Tim and Steve Moore pulled me aside and he said hey keep it keep it simple keep it keep it short and simple I was like oh so I, I, have, I have two masters now, so we'll, we'll see where we fall, um, but I, I'm sure it'll be, it'll be good. We are good. Okay. All right. So um, we ha have been covering the Philippines for, for many years now. Uh, the individual I would like to talk about uh, is located in the very north of, of the, uh, the country, uh, Jerry Calistravo, right up here. Um, but just briefly, so we support 10 preachers in the Philippines. Last year we had 11. Uh, one preacher uh, immigrated to the United States over the last year, and so he no longer requires support, uh, so that's, that's great for him. Um, and then we rely heavily on the expertise of individuals that, that go there. We haven't seen anybody there uh, for many years. Um, Brother Ron Halbrook uh, is an evangelist in, at Hebron Lane Church of Christ in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, and he goes several times a year. I think uh, he's an older gentleman. He's done, I think he just hit his 80th trip to the Philippines, um, which is, he, he is committed. Uh, so he knows a lot of these uh, brothers very intimately. And then also uh, Trey Torno. Uh, many, many of you know Trey. Um, he went to the Philippines a couple of months ago, and he came. Uh, he visited uh, Mindanao, which is this island down here, and he actually met several of the men that we communicate with. So we, we, we talk a lot with other men uh, and other individuals that, that communicate with our, our supporter preachers. And uh, one interesting story from Trey, uh, he said he was preaching, he was doing a, um, he started to preach a lesson and he did like so many of us do when we come up here, hey, would you, you know, turn your Bibles to X passage? And it was, it was crickets. And he realized no one had Bibles. And it's such an interesting, you know, so totally different than here. I mean, I, I have many Bibles in my house, more than, more than we have people. Um, but there, that is a, a very uh, desired commodity. And so we are going to be doing things as a church to, to try to increase the number of Bibles, the number of uh, scriptures that they have. Um, so here's Jerry. Let's make sure we're all on the screen. Cool. So um, 
one really interesting tradition they have in the Philippines. This is a birthday party. And what's super cool is they actually bring, I'm already walking away, right? They, they bring preachers to preach at birthday parties. And I, I think that's just the, the coolest thing. Now, I, I don't know how my kids would act if, if they said, hey, you know, you, we're going to plan your birthday party. It's always like a you know, four-month-away conversation about what we're going to do. I don't know if they would say, hey, top of mind, let's bring Ben in. Um, <laughs> but, but maybe, but maybe. Um, but what's really cool about this particular birthday and what, why I, I chose this one was that two individuals actually uh, responded to the gospel. And so that's the young man over there uh, to the left being baptized. And it, how in, in our lives that we live, is it normal for us to preach or to just be who we are here, be the same person in our normal lives? It, it, it's, just, it's so encouraging that, I mean, I don't know how y'all's family are, but, you know, my family, it, it's, there's some people that are, are Christians and there's some people that aren't. Everybody gets together. In the Philippines, at least, you know, from what I see, it, it doesn't matter. Just preach. The, the word is what it is. We're Christians. This is what we do. And it, it, it's just so encouraging. Um, Brother Jerry is this individual right here. And full disclosure, a lot of these guys, I, I don't actually know what they look like because a lot of times they'll, they'll send pictures like this. And unless it's, you know, just a, a self-portrait, like selfie, hey, this is me, I don't know which, which guy it is. So in preparing for this lesson, I emailed Jerry, and I was like, hey, um, you know, sorry to bother you. you know, we're, we're doing a lesson. Um, would you mind, one, if I use this, and then this story, and then two, are you in this picture? And if so, who, who are you? And so he wrote, he, he wrote back, and, and it'll turn serious for just a second, but he wrote back, and he said, this is like the next day, okay? So he said, dear brother Ryan, this is in response to me sending a random, hey, are you in this picture question. Brother, please pray for my family. We experienced a very strong earthquake one hour ago. Our house wall divider was collapsed. We covered by the pavement, and I'll read exactly how he's talking. Uh, we covered by the pavement. Our neighbors come and rescued us. They removed the broken pa pavement, me and my son Stephen, almost dying. Luckily, we survived. Our time here is 1.15 in the morning of October 26, 2022. After the shock followed another three shock, the Department of Risk Re Reduction Management Council will come to bring us hospital uh, to cure our Ill injuries. My family very much thankful to the Lord we are now secured. When I open my cell phone to inform you about what happened to my family, I read your email. Yes, brother, second from the right beside the man wearing the face mask. I wear a yellow polo shirt. Again, brethren, please count us in your prayers. I will update you, in, uh, you for my next email. Yours, your brother in, in Christ, Jerry Calistravo. So one, you know, there's, there's a ton of earthquakes, there's, there's typhoons, a lot of the structures aren't the greatest over there. And so he's in the middle of this, it's 1.15 in the morning, and he has the wherewithal to reply <laughs> to reply to my email. You know, there's days I get home, and the elders will send a message, and I'm stressed out from work, whatever being, and I'm like, I'll get to this tomorrow. <laughs> I, I don't know how he, he did what he did. And, and it's just very, the, dedic the level of dedication from these preachers, it's, it, it kind of takes your breath away a lot of the times. Um, so I just want to communicate that to you. Um, secondly, I just want to read quickly a, a letter he wrote. We were able as a church uh, to increase the support for 10 preachers over this last year. So in, in inflation is a worldwide thing. Um, and so we increased his support uh, by $150 a month up to $950. So that's how much he makes per month, $950. Uh, so he says, Dear Brother Ryan, my family expresses our thankfulness to the whole congregation for increasing my financial fund. The truth is my wife and I would like to appeal for increasing because our daughter, Nicole Kate Calistravo, is studying in college and we difficult to provide her need. Our, da our daughter focused study taking medicine with overall grades 97.2 with high honor beyond our difficulties. We pray without ceasing to the Lord to provide our need. When I open my email box, to send my report, I read your email that the elder decide to increase my monthly fund. I cannot control my emotion while, uh, pa while, while passing and reading your email, the tears falling on my face with gladness. My wife came to ask me and said, what happened? I answer, our Lord, answer our prayers. And we says, uh, thank you, Lord. Hug me with joys uh, of tears. So, again, very, very thankful uh, for everything that, that through your, your giving that, that we're able to do as, as a congregation. 
Um, so South Africa, you can notice here this slide looks a little bit different uh, than it did last year, thankfully. So last year we were just uh, supporting uh, Warren Skoltz down here. Uh, we did, if you remember, this was last summer, uh, we were able to, to uh, send him $19,500 uh, to buy a, a new truck. He does a lot of benevolence work there, um, so we were able to do that. We picked up two uh, new preachers. One's name is Tandu Nukubi, um, and actually, you, you think, where do, where do these guys come from? You know, do you just get a random email? What? So a lot of these are, are um, recommended by brothers or other Christians or, or whoever it might be. So brother Sean Kogutz actually recommended Tando and, and uh, got us the information there. He needed um, support. We were able to fill that. Uh, the individual I'd like to highlight today is uh, Clayton Sanday. Clayton is known to a man who's also supported by Custer Road Church of Christ. Um, the individual they support, his name is Mavhutu, and he recommended Clayton. Um, and that kind of is how the, the conversation started there. This is a screenshot, so sorry for the small pictures, but this is a screenshot I sent of his, uh, one of his reports. Um, I thought it was super interesting. So uh, we had a wonderful day at Mount uh, Mangy, and after the service, seven souls were baptized. Please pray for their spiritual growth. And, you know, they have health workers just like we have here, I guess. And so this is the congregation, you know, again, under a tree, praising God. Um, there are different pictures. Uh, but one of the requirements that these health workers put on them was, hey, you need to have some type of, of, of toilet. Uh, so he was basically asking for funds to help build this. They, they built a huge pit, but at the same time, there's other necessities that kind of come with having you know, proper toiletries there. Um, this is kind of the part of the update that I would ask. There's some things request-wise we get that th the church probably could do it, but it might be safer if individuals do it. And so a lot of the times, you know, we'll act as kind of a first-line filter on, on some requests that it's like, ah, you know, I don't know if there's any doubt, then we'll kind of handle it ourselves with people that we know that, that hey, they've kind of told us, if there's ever an opportunity, you know, if it's, say, $50 a quarter or whatever it might be, let me know, and I would love to help out with that. We're, we're always open for these, these types of, uh, of contributions, you know, not as a church. If you as an individual or as a family, you know, have a number that you would like, to give per month or you had a, a good year or whatever it might be, let us know. There's always needs out there. Um, so again, just letting you all know about that. Th uh, this one, that the church did not pay for this. Um, let's see. Yeah, there we go. And this is uh, what that looked like, that specific baptism he was talking about there. Um, Clayton and Mavhutu preach a lot together and they have what they call their outreach program. It's like, hey, we did another outreach program. What that involves is almost like camping. They'll go out with their family, drive away from where they, they live at, and they'll literally pitch tents. They have their tents. They'll stay there for a couple of days, usually over a weekend, because uh, Mabutu, at least, he, he works. Um, and then they'll preach in the local area and try to start a church. Um, and that's so different, I think, than what we see here. Um, that it, It's just, I, I just find it fascinating, and, and it's, it's what the Bible is. And it, it's just, it's so uplifting. Um, Two areas of benevolence also uh, is Brother Clayton and bro Brother Mafutu that uh, Cedar, or not Cedar Park, excuse me, um, Custer Road supports. We're sending them, uh, there was a need, uh, they're having a lot of drought this year um, in northern Zimbabwe, and we sent them, it's going to, between the two preachers, it's going to be about $5,400 over the, oh, through the spring, and so that's basic necessities for subsistence. It's like going from one meal a day to two, um, so that's it, it is a big deal to them. So just letting you know about, about that work there. Um, and then lastly, in India. So India is relatively new to us. I, I hadn't, you know, learned a whole lot about it. And this, this opportunity came along. And where the genesis of, of um, Billy is, I, we were visiting, my family and I were visiting Cedar Park down in Austin. We were talking to one of the deacons there that handles you know, we always try to compare notes. You know, hey, what you know, challenges do you have? We, we just see how and if we can learn anything from each other. And he brought up Billy, uh, and Billy was actually coming to the United States. Billy's not his real name. So, I, like, if you see quotations there. Um, but the reason we have Billy is, one, he goes by it, and Americans can, can pronounce it. But, two, they actually, in India, have, like, systemic persecution from the government. So um, India is 80% uh, Hindu. And they do not like Christians. And about 15% Muslims, and they do not like Christians. Um, if I can go back real fast. Sorry to backtrack. 
So the majority of the Christian population in India, this is southern India, is located more on the east and the south of the country. And that's where Billy's at. Um, so again, we won't put his real name on here just in, so it's not out there uh, on the internet, um, putting his name out there. So India as a whole, 1.4 billion people. So just think about that. It, it's about the same size as China. In the next 10 years, the UN at least, for whatever it's worth, says that they're going to surpass China on the number of individuals there. So it's, it's a massive, massive population. Um, also their Hindu 300 has, has 330 million gods. So just, just think about that. So obviously, almost like we would say pagans, you know, sacrificing, idol, very much idol worship. There's an idol on every corner. They're sacrificing those idols. In some places, they actually still have human sacrifices. Um, there, there's a story out there that, that Billy saved the lady from being almost on the verge of being sacrificed. He was going through these tribal areas, and they had basically got her drunk. The thing about being a sacrificial, you know, thing is that you don't know you're about to be sacrificed. Um, the witch doctor points at you and you say, hey, you know, it's you, and they get you really drunk, and then all of a sudden you die. Um, and so he actually basically kidnapped this lady just to save her life and got her out of there, and she became a Christian very shortly after that. Um, but there's, with with Billy, this this culture, there's so many stories like that that it's, we could be here all day. Um so Billy as a whole, like I said, came recommended uh, from uh, our, our brethren down in Cedar Park. Uh, one kind of note just to make sure we're all you know, aware, our churches are all individuals. Cedar Park doesn't control anything we do. We don't control anything they do. Everything's separated, um, just as it is in the Bible. But with that said, we do take recommendations, and we, we do take warnings from people. We might not support an individual if a church says, hey, this was an experience we had. Um, so just you know, trying to be as wise as we can uh, in being good stewards with what God has given us. Um, Billy came to the United States. He has family in California. Uh, so he actually came to the U.S. and visited the elders back in September. And they had the opportunity to sit down and, and talk and go over actual doctrinal questions with him um, and found that he was faithful and, and very, very excited and encouraged about his work. Um, w a couple of areas that we're going to be looking at uh, or, or have decided, the elders have, supporting him is our goal, Billy said that, hey, one of the big things we need, we need Bibles. We need print Bibles and songbooks. Uh, so the goal here and what we've committed to is through June is to support him with over 5,000 Bibles. Um, and they said, hey, how many do you need? And he said, we need about 600 a month. And you think about that, that is the gospel on fire where you look at the number of, of either baptisms, the, what is the actual need in, in Bibles quantified out? 600 a month. I mean, it kind of takes my breath away. Um, I, th I think that was uh, e either 4 or $6 a Bible, but anyways, it comes out to about $21,000. So it, it is a large commitment through June. Um, and then this 10 tribal preachers. So Billy, it's really interesting too. He, so he's a preacher there, and he preaches at several churches, uh, but he also has what he calls like his, his preacher, like basically a training program, and he takes applications. And each year he has three to 400 young men apply to come spend an extended amount of time learning from him. And he takes between 30 and 40, something like that. So he, he says, I take the cream of the crop. It's hard to get in mine. And, but just, I mean, think about that. If we had a preacher training program with 300 people apply, I don't know, I mean, maybe, but probably not. Um, it, it's super impressive. But uh, then he sends them on and they go be independent preachers. And so we're going to help with 10 of these young men kind of starting them off. Um, and then, again, we're reevaluating this in June. Each year we send a survey out to kind of see if the need has changed. Um, and so we're, we've committed through June, and we, then we want to kind of take a step back and see are we getting the results that we would like. You know, is Billy faithful in this, which I have no doubt that he will be, um, and, and reevaluate. Um, and, and as a side note, too, um, I, I did get a chance. I went to California uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I did get a chance to meet his sister in San Jose. So, again, any opportunities that we have or that you have to meet the family or these preachers, please take them and, and report back to us. This is, a, this is a brotherhood, and it's a totally a joint effort. So another really interesting um, piece of, of kind of the Indian puzzle here is – Billy actually preaches at a church that is comprised of members of a leper colony. So you think leper colony, you think Old Testament, and you're like, whoa, that's, that, that doesn't exist today. 
it 100% exists today. And India actually kind of hides, uh, as a government, hides a lot of the statistics because it looks bad. You know, you can't be a, a great nation if you have a leprosy problem. I 100% have a leprosy problem in, in India. Um, these are Christians that comprise this church. Um, and we actually uh, were able to submit uh, a one-time payment of $2,800 for medication for these uh, to help treatment. And I, I got the some pictures this morning. Um, and I was like, oh, no, I wasn't able to throw it on the screen. Um, but that is being uh, distributed kind of as we speak almost. Over the last couple of days, they started their first round of treatments. Um, it, it's, it's just it's brutal what at least these Christians endure. Um, leprosy, that I'm, I'm kind of learning about it. Uh, but, you know, it, it rots your skin, your bones. And, I mean, these individuals are actually performing surgery on themselves without anesthesia. You know, if it's in your hands, they'll they'll cut their own fingers off to try to save the rest of their hand. And it's just, it's otherworldly kind of what these individuals are facing. And so anything we can do to help is, it, it's just, a, it's so much of a blessing to them. And this is uh, pictures of the actual, of, of that congregation being baptized. Um, so again, um, kind of takes your breath away looking at it. So, uh, Compared to Hindu, so why is the gospel pr spreading so quickly in India? Um, really, three reasons is what Billy kind of pointed to as far as Hindu versus Christianity. What's the takeaway? Why are people converting? Because when you convert and you're an Indian, you lose everything. Your family disowns you. Your society disowns you. You're, you're gone. So why, why is that worth it? First and foremost, there's one God that loves them versus 330 million who you're trying to appease all of them. And at some point, one of them's always mad at you. You're always having to sacrifice. You're always having to do something. Completely different with, with Christ. Second, that you're free from sins. It's not a continual thing. And then one sacrifice. So they're like, you mean to tell me that, that Jesus died once for me and that's it? Correct. That, that's absolutely true. And so verses like Hebrews 9, verse 12 not with the blood of goats and calves, but with, the, with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. We read that, and it's kind of a, a thing of old. Maybe, that's, maybe I'm just guilty of that, thinking about that. But there, this is real. Almost two billion people. This is, they're talking about their daily life. And uh, it, it's, again, the fact that the gospel is without, it has, doesn't have a, a time on it. It doesn't have a culture component to it it's it is truth once and for all um that's what they like and then lastly on this and then the lesson will be yours um so in india i, I didn't realize this and i actually asked billy about it um so arranged marriages is still very much the the norm uh and you just think that for a second it's so different from what i mean it, it's it's hard to even just fathom what that would look like like your parents or whoever it might be arranging your marriage to find out, you know, bartering or whatever it might, who, who are you going to marry? Who's going to be your spouse? Uh, but I mean, that was the way it was in Bible times a lot of times. Um, and I mean, as, as a kid growing up, maybe in college, that would have terrified me because I, I question my, my parents, especially my grandparents' judgment. Now as a father, I'm like, hey, that's, I don't know. There might be something to this. Um, but I, I, I told, I told Noah and I was going to embarrass him as like, if, you know, we can do your way for a little while, but if, if it doesn't work out, then I, I know a guy in India that he'll, he'll hook me up. Um, so, and then, so, so that, that's kind of the concludes that portion of it. Um, but so what is the next year? What are we doing? You know, what's kind of the, the plan? What do we want to accomplish? Um, our goal is we want better communication with you guys. Uh, th this kind of has been just trying to keep your head above water and, and you can always do better with, with working with these men. Um, but we do want to get where on, on our uh, church website there will be like a a preacher section, men who, who we support outside, and there'll be a map kind of like the one you first saw. You can click on the guy's name, and it'll have his picture and the kind of bio and then, you know, what his activities are, hopefully then linked with what his monthly reports are. Um, and then we would like to have kind of some preacher slides where it's, it's kind of stuff like this that's flipping through in between services just so you can see those. Uh, full disclosures, I had told the elders that we were going to have this before this, this, uh, this video. Stephen's shaking his head. Yeah, you did. Um, so that's not there yet. So I do want to take a step back and say thank you for your long suffering. 
and patience with me um, while we do all this. So that is where we, we are, are going, God willing. Um, and then we want to also communicate better, better chances to give. If, if that's something you're able to do and you have that desire, let us know, and we really want to make that available. You know, we, we have a, a list out there. If someone needs a ride, you know, I'll send out an email saying, hey, there's, you know, someone needs a ride and, and you're on that list. You know, we can probably do something very similar that's not the work of the church if, there, if, it's, just, if it's individuals you make yourself known and if someone needs something. Uh, Clayton Sande, his, his daughters, their tuition was up and he had run out of money because of, of traveling. Well, the, the church isn't going to send money to support your education, but an individual will. And so that's something that, that we were able to do. So if you want to be involved with that, please let us know. Um, and then also, kind of a passion of mine and, and all of this really is, you know, developing means of continually validating the doctrinal soundness of the guys we support. And, th- and that's also on our, on our end, too, because we don't have a monopoly on truth. And so it works both ways. Um, so kind of a, if this was a, a business, you know, you always hear stretch goals. What's your stretch goal? Our stretch goal is we would really like to have some type of mechanism where we're physically laying eyes and shaking the hands of these guys once every two years. That would be an amazing accomplishment to where then you know, in those kind of conversations, you can talk about things that are other than, you know, just, hey, how you doing? But you can get into, like, the, the meat of, of doctrine. And uh, so that's, that's kind of our goal there. And then lastly, just, you know, why we have this, this lesson as, as a group, um, you know, hopefully you, you leave edified and knowing that the things you give are there's there's stewardship behind it. Um, but then also what we don't want is, is that sense of pride of like, you know, look, look what I've done. And so just, you know, where should our minds be? Um, because let's face it, we're a rich congregation in, in the history of the world across the, the spans of time. We're extremely blessed physically, and, and we can do these things. Um, and this is uh, from First Chronicles 29, 14. Uh, David praising God for the offering uh, to build the temple. Uh, but who am I, and who are my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. So all these things are, are God's anyways. We're just stewards of them in this life. Um, so thank you so much for paying attention and, and being interested in this. Thank you, Tim, uh, for everything you've done. And uh, it's great to work with you. And, and thank you also for the elders. Um, in, in closing, we would like, in the spirit of the, the men that we support and the God that we serve, uh, to offer an invitation. Um, I, I, I had said it earlier, what makes this, at least in my mind, so amazing and awesome is that this is the same word that is preached all throughout the time, all throughout different cultures, different countries. In Acts, the second chapter, verse uh, second chapter, verse thirty-seven, uh, the individuals Peter was was speaking to. It says, "Now they were when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do?" And this is a question that's being asked in the Philippines, in India, in South America, all across the U.S. What is it that we need to do? And the answer, regardless of time and space, is verse 38. It remains the same. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You know, that's not our cultural American take on it. That's what the Bible says, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, Thank you so much uh, for your time and your your patience. Um, If anyone has need uh, to come forward and to be um, counted as a member of of Christ, or if you need the prayers of the congregation, uh, please come forward while we stand and sing.